Hey Church Online, it's Reverend Mike and I'm here with my wife Valerie. Hi Valerie. Hi. Hey, Valerie <laughs> is one of the people, actually she's the head person who helped us online during our hosting of Church Online every week. She does an incredible job. She has great... Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. See? <laughs> Compliments. She does an incredible job. She has a real heart for you all. And uh, she's the one who's really chatting with you every week. Um, but Valerie, we have something new that we're about to do. Yeah, it's we, pretty exciting. It's very exciting. We've been on Facebook Live, and that's been the main way that you've helped, is chatting and, and kind of directing people on Facebook Live. But actually, starting next Sunday, December 8th, we're going to start migrating people from Facebook Live to our own website, mychristchurch.com, where you'll be hosting a chat there. So it'll be exactly the same, but it'll a different place. It will be exactly the same at a different place, not on Facebook for the chat, but will we still be on Facebook? Yes. We are still on Facebook. Will we still be on YouTube Live? Absolutely. We'll still be on YouTube Live, but the chatting feature will now go through mychristchurch.com. And it's going to be really exciting. There's a little bit more privacy there. Uh, there. One of the really cool things is that there's actually, with this website that we're using, it has a version Bible app there. So you can actually pull up the Bible app. Not only that, you can log in if you'd like to do that and create personal notes. We're really excited about it. And it's going to happen next Sunday. December 8th and we'll share all those links and we'll you. share all the links again we'll still be on Facebook if you wonder why no one's talking Valerie will put something on there and let you know where we need to uh, take you so we can start to chat and have community together so grateful for you excited for what God's going to do now let's get ready to worship
taken directly from the prophet Isaiah who prophesied that one day a Messiah would come. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is the beginning of the church year, so it is sort of appropriate for us to say Happy New Year. We begin our new journey through the life of Christ today. We have a candle lit on a wreath here. It's called an Advent wreath for this season. Some of you may have grown up in a tradition that celebrated Advent. Others of you may have not. I did not grow up in a tradition that celebrated it. But it is a way of marking time. It is a way of celebrating the Sundays leading up to Christmas. And today we talk about the hope that Christ would bring. We know as Christians that Christ has already come. We're not trying to pretend that we're imagining that he hasn't come yet. What we're doing is that we also know that he will come again. So as we anticipate the celebration of Christmas and Christ's birth, we also eagerly await his return to bring that peace, to be the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, the one that would bring peace to the world where they would not make implements of war or war with one another. They would make peace with one another. And the Bible tells us that he is the one that we have hope in to bring that peace when he returns again. So as we celebrate Advent this season, let's join our hearts together in the anticipation of the hope of Jesus to come. Let's sing together, O come all you faithful.
Almighty God, we thank you that your Holy Spirit is here among us. Dear God, as we unite our hearts and our voices in praising the name of Jesus, we just realize there's no, there's nothing better we could do than praise the name of our Lord and our Savior. And dear God, on this opening Sunday, when we lean in to the gift that you have given us in Jesus Christ. We are reminded that Christianity is not a religion. It's not blind adherence to a preconceived set of notions, but Christianity at its essence is a relationship. It's a relationship with you, O creating God, all-powerful God, almighty God. It's a relationship with you through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are grateful that you would want to be in relationship with the likes of us. Dear God, we come in thanksgiving. We come rejoicing. And we come in hope because we need your hope. And we thank you for this incredible season where we celebrate the arrival of Christ as a helpless infant and as we remind ourselves that that Christ who came so long ago will someday return, not as a baby, but as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you for this holy moment that we celebrate in this incredible season. And we pray it in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Amen. We want to invite you to begin thinking invitations. 
There are some cards that are just little Christmas cards that we just invite you to hand out to folks. Leave it with your tip and with your bill after lunch today. Just pick five or 10 of these up there at the Sink Center. Pass them out liberally during the season. Next week, we'll have some cards that begin advertising all of our Christmas Eve services. Let's get really evangelistic in sharing the good news of Christ. I am so glad you're here today. Would you take just a moment and greet one another. time. Stand with me as we read our first scripture, except those of you who are seated. <laughs> Luke 1, 26 through 38, we invite those of you on Facebook Live to join us. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that holy one who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. We're kicking off our Hope Beyond series today, and I'd like to introduce our pastor of congregational care, Carmen Wibbles, to bring our message. I paid them all to be here, just so you know. That is your Christchurch teens. And if you are parents of any of those teens, I love your children. I get to spend time with them on Wednesday evenings, and they are just a delight. So thank you for allowing us that time with them. This past summer, I was in Washington, D.C. on business, and we had walked about 12 miles one day, and the last stop that we were going to make was the White House. Being the good tourist that I am, I was so excited because I was preparing to get the best picture that I could get. So I made a beeline for the White House, and around the perimeter of the White House was a gate. Now when I get up to the gate, I recognize that there's no one there taking pictures, and I think, well, wow, this is a great place to take a picture. That's really odd. But I went on about my business because, again, I'm all about getting the great picture. So I moved right in there, and as I was gawking and taking pictures, I could hear in the background a man saying, 
hey lady, hey lady. And I thought, what in the world? So I continued taking and getting my perfect photo and I hear him again, hey lady. And I thought to myself, what is wrong with that lady that she'll not listen to that man? <laughs> again, I hear, hey lady, get out of the road. Now I'm a little unnerved because it's, I'm trying to get my picture and all I'm hearing is this in the background. It's interfering with my picture taking. So I decided to turn around and see what was wrong with this lady and why she wouldn't listen to this man. Imagine my shock, my surprise, and even my fear when I realized it was me. It was me that they were yelling at. They wanted me to get out of the road. I was a lady standing in the road taking my photo and there was a line of cars just watching me while the officer walked my way. I can imagine that this is the surprise that Mary felt when Gabriel the angel came to her and said she was going to have a baby. Mary was a girl of about 12 to 14 years of age and we know this because that was the time um, that they betrothed the girls, or promised them, or as we say, engaged. So now, according to Jewish law, an engagement was as binding as a marriage. So during this time of engagement, the couple were even called husband and wife, although they did not yet consummate their marriage until after the big feast. I imagine that being married to Joseph was the only thing that Mary had on her mind, she was probably making plans for the feast, for the, the party, if you will, sending invitations, picking out the perfect gown, deciding what the type of food they would have that day. All that planning that you know goes into the big day. I can remember planning our wedding like it was yesterday. I remember it being a joyful time, a time of anticipation and excitement. There we are. Now, a lot can happen in 33 years. We just celebrated 33 years. So back then, Gary chased me with roses. Today, he chases me with a shotgun. Just saying. <laughs> so Mary's caught up in the planning and excitement around the big wedding. And then, and then Mary's life was changed forever. God, said the angel, God sent the angel Gabriel to tell Mary that she was pregnant. Take a look at this clip. In the ancient writings, a savior was prophesied. This would bring peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And it was written long ago that God would give us a sign. A young girl would conceive, though never having been with a man, and she would give birth to a baby boy. He would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Mother? Father? You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name 
Jesus. For nothing is impossible with God. I am a servant of the Lord. May everything you have said about me come true. A young woman says yes to the unimaginable. Her story is not the first, nor the last, when God will ask great things of his people. And when we say yes, it can change everything. In verse 28, we see that the angel Gabriel came into her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now the name Gabriel means man of God. And Gabriel does not appear that often in the scripture, but when he does, he always makes a special announcement. So we see him appear three times in the scripture. The first time is in Daniel, when he goes to Daniel and interprets Daniel's vision. The second time in scripture is in Luke, when Gabriel appears to Zechariah and told him his prayers had been answered and that his barren wife, Elizabeth, would bear a son and his name would be John. Gabriel was speaking of the arrival of John the Baptist. The third appearance is when he appeared to Mary and made the best announcement of all that she would conceive a son by the Holy Spirit and his name would be Jesus. In Luke verse 30, 1 verse 30, we see where Gabriel tells Mary to fear not because she has found favor with God. Mary was favored because the Lord set his undeserved grace upon her. Just like us. It's nothing that we could do, and it was nothing that Mary could do. We don't deserve God's grace, but praise God, he gives it to us. I believe that having God's favor, as Mary did, is when he calls us out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary. I believe it's when he calls us to the impossible that only he can make possible. Verse 31 says, And behold, there shalt, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Can't you hear Mary saying, Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a hot minute. How can I be pregnant? I've never been with a man. But then Gabriel explains to her that the Holy Ghost will come upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her, and the child will be called the Son of God. So this virgin birth that is about to happen to Mary is a direct intervention from God. Gabriel knows that it will be hard for Mary to understand and that she will have doubts, but he proclaims to Mary in verse 37 that with God, nothing is impossible. Do you all hear what he is saying? Nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with God. Know that with God, the impossible is made possible. You know, life's hard. It's never as it seems. There's so many interruptions, just like the interruption that Mary experienced in her life. There are health issues, job issues, loss of job, loss of family, so many interruptions. Some of you have most recently maybe lost your job. There are other family challenges, and certainly around the holidays we can see family dysfunction. 
And I know there are even some of you experiencing a loss around your table this year. I remember a few years ago, just before Christmas, my grandmother Anders passed away. Her funeral was on Christmas Eve. In all honesty, it was a difficult time for us. But we had hope in Jesus and a hope of a brighter tomorrow. And we knew that Grandmother Anders had that same hope, and that gave us peace. I often speak um, of outside noise or distractions and interruptions, so if you're ever in a conversation with me, I might bring that up. Um, things that can take us off target, things that can take our eyes off of Jesus, and things that can take us off our mission and our goal. God's word tells us in Proverbs 3 to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, and he will make our paths straight. In Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. In Jeremiah 29, 11, and I know that you're all familiar with it, the scripture's actually out in Scripture Hall, says, For I know the thoughts that I have toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. But I want to read the next two verses because they mean a lot as well. Verse 12 and 13. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. God tells us to pray and to seek him. As we move into the Christmas season, let us, like Mary, have faith and hope in God that he will protect us and he will make the impossible possible. I've spent much time in healthcare. Do we have any medical personnel in here? Thank you for your service to God's people. In healthcare, we use what we call PPE for protection. That stands for Personal Protective Equipment. And I brought some with me today hand washing, gloves, a mask, and these beautiful gowns that we wear. Now, all of this in healthcare is mandatory for us so that we are protected against germs. And I want to suggest some mandatory personal protective equipment for you today. So, this is probably a good time to get out your pen and paper. This personal protective equipment you can use to help you through the times in your life when you have no hope, when there are interruptions, when there's fears, when there's anxiety when you have depression, and when you have feelings of low self-esteem, and when the outside noise just gets too much to tolerate. You can use the following PPE. First and foremost, pray to your God. Secondly, praise and worship God for what he's already done and what he's going to do for you. And then the third thing is to evangelize. Go tell someone what Jesus has done for you. Tell how God has helped you. God wants you to use your story for his glory. You know, so many times I feel like we get caught up in I have to know the scriptures and I don't know the right words to say and I don't know. It's very hard to pray with other people. What do I say when I pray with other people? But you know what? God will direct that. All you have to do is to go and tell your story and give God the glory. I'd like to share with you about a story of hope that I witnessed while I was on a mission trip to Honduras with Feed My Sheep. This was um, back in October. This is the team here. I was so blessed by the people there. They are a happy, hope-filled people. I was there to be the hands and feet of Jesus to them, but instead, they so blessed me and blessed my heart and really showed me who Jesus really is. The church that we were in only had three walls and a dirt floor. 
and people came from all over. You can see that it, the church is full. Um, it was about 100 degrees that day, and the folks in the back are standing in the sun. And they stood in the believe he is enough. I'm so grateful for my lessons learned while I was in Honduras. As I said, I've been in healthcare for a long time, more than 38 years. I've seen the mighty hand of God. I have seen miracles that our human minds cannot comprehend and medical science certainly could not explain. We here at Christ Church witnessed a miracle in our own Christ Church family. There's a beautiful boy that we prayed for healing. We came together in unity, and God heard our prayers and answered our prayers. I'm referring to Levi, son of Ashley and Dwight Sanders. Levi will be two in December. He's born with a blood disorder, causing his, he had low platelets so that his blood couldn't clot. So this required him to have, um, blood transfusions, bone marrow transplants, two bone marrow transplants, several surgeries, lots and lots of medications. And well, you can see what I'm saying. He was a very sick little boy. Dwight and Ashley kept their faith and hope in Jesus. They prayed, they praised, and they, they are now evangelizing their story by telling others about what God did for Levi and their family, and they are giving God all the glory. I'm always blessed by Ashley's words of encouragement, faith, and hope as she tells her story on Facebook. You see, although it looked impossible to the world, Ashley and Dwight kept their faith and hope in Jesus, and Jesus made the impossible possible. I'm here to tell you that Nothing is impossible with our God. It can be so easy to lose hope with so much outside noise. We see it in the papers, I think. Do people still get the paper? I'm not sure. Any of you still get the paper? No? Oh, there's a couple. We see it in the news, on Facebook, Instagram, and some of us have even experienced it firsthand. So let's go into this Christmas season with renewed faith and hope in God and make a promise to use our PPE. Let us pray, praise, and evangelize. In our scripture today, verse 38, Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary had this hope that God was who he said he was, and that God would take care of her no matter what the situation. Do you believe today that nothing is impossible with God and he will care for your every need? What's your answer to God when he calls you to do hard things? Can you say, nothing is impossible with God? When your plans are interrupted, can you say, I know that God's going to take care of me and nothing is impossible with God. When your future seems dark, can you say, I know that I have a bright future and a bright tomorrow because nothing is impossible with God. When the doctors say they can do nothing, can you say, nothing is impossible with my God? Paul wrote in Corinthians 15, I am saved by grace 
And anything that happens in my life is God's grace working in me. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that God's thoughts for you are to prosper you and not harm you, but plans to give you a future and a hope? Do you have hope beyond today? A hope for tomorrow? A hope beyond this life? Do you have a hope in life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you have a hope beyond this life and a hope that God can do what he says he's going to do in your life and make the impossible possible? Will you pray with me? Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we just want to thank you, Father God, for sending your son Jesus to be born of a virgin so that, Father God, we can have a hope and a future. A hope not only for today, Father, but a hope for tomorrow and a hope for life eternal through Jesus Christ, your son. Father, we give you all praise and all glory. If there's anyone in our congregation today, Father, that doesn't have that hope, Father, I pray that you would wrap your arms around them and let them know that you are present and that they can have hope in you. We give you all praise and all glory, Father God, for the great and mighty things that you do. All these things we pray. In your precious and holy Son's name, Jesus, name above all names, amen.
Today we have a wonderful time of celebrating. Uh, we are celebrating 11 babies today who are going to be uh, baptized and, and presented to our congregation. And uh, I am so glad that uh, we, we spread these out, spread out meaning they're all almost next service. But I'm glad that uh, Josh and Nancy and their family are able to be at this service because it's so important that we include the children in the life of the church. I love to say children are not just our future, they are our present. We are committed to the children of Christ Church and we're committed to the families of Christ Church. Josh and Nancy, I would ask you on behalf of this church, do you profess your faith in Jesus Christ? Do you put your whole trust in His grace? And promise to continue to serve him in union with the church which Christ has opened to everyone. If so, say, we do. And do you renew the solemn vow and promise made at your baptisms? If so, say, we do. And will you commit to raising this child and all of your children in the nurture and care of the church that they may want for themselves one day the faith they see in you? If so, say, we will. And church, lest you think you're off the hook, Will all of you do everything in your power to support these and all the children of Christ Church? Will you be good examples in front of them that they will see Jesus in you and want that Jesus for themselves? If so, say, we will. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for this gift of water and he who will receive it on this day. Wash away his sin, clothe them in righteousness that he will become everything you have created him to be. Thank you, dear God for this prophetic moment that we prophesy that this child will grow to be a man of God. And we pray it in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Levi Parker, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, I pray your blessing upon this little boy. And I prophesy in the midst of your people that he will grow to become a mighty man of God. Protect his life. Surround him with protection and joy. And may his home provide the good soil that children need to be godly men and women. Thank you for this church and for the responsibility that we have accepted for this life. And thank you for his life in Christ that will never end. In Jesus' strong name I pray, amen. Christ Church, I present to you Levi Parker Schmees. Would you welcome him? I would remind every single one of you that children are not just gifts to their nuclear and extended family, but they're gifts to the entire church. We have a future and a hope because we have a church filled with the Holy Spirit and because we have a church filled with children. Let's nurture these kids, let's support these kids, and let's prophesy over these kids every day of our lives that they will become mighty men and women of God. Even as you have offered this child to God and we celebrate what God is doing and will do in his life, on behalf of the church and on behalf of the Lord, 
I just remind you, this really isn't your little boy. This is God's little boy. He just entrusted you to raise him. So raise him well. And I know something that he already knows. God could not have chosen a more wonderful family to raise him in. May God's peace and God's joy be with you all. And thank you for letting me be a part of your lives. We're going to turn our attention now towards the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. And I have a lot of information I need to relate to you this morning. So here we go. Operation Christmas Cheer begins today back at the Sink Center. You'll see our friend Jean. She is going to be there, and she will have an envelope. If you'd like to take part in a Project Christmas Cheer, you're going to grab an envelope. You're going to look inside, and you are going to find some gift suggestions for a nursing home resident here in the Metro East. These gifts will need to be wrapped and brought back to the church no later than December the 15th. We are committed to giving a gift to each one of these residents. Many of these, basically all of them, will not get a present otherwise. And this is a great way for us to reach out to them during this season to show them some love from us here at Christ Church. So take care, get get an envelope. Don't wait because they will be gone today. Also, the prison ministry is collecting homemade cookies, and they'll need to be brought to the church on December 13th and 14th, and they're going to be packed up and delivered to our prison ministry on the 15th. So you can make those cookies and bring them in at that time. This Friday night at 7 p.m. is Jingle Jam. Last year it was so big, it was in the chapel, we had to open up every door, and we were just packed out the gills there. So we are going to have it here in the sanctuary this Friday night family event. It's going to be a blast. Come on out and join us for Jingle Jam on Friday night at 7. Then next Sunday at 2 p.m. is our choir Christmas concert. We're doing a special work by John Rudder called Gloria, but we're also doing a lot of wonderful Christmas carols with organ and brass ensemble, and we're looking forward to having a great concert next Sunday at 2 p.m., followed by a cookie reception in the cafe. And then Christmas Eve is coming very soon. Here we are on the 1st of December, and our first Christmas Eve service is going to be December the 19th. You might say, well, that's awfully early. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, we are busily planning for it, but it is our getaway service. It will be the Thursday night before uh, the Christmas, um, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It's a great opportunity if you're going to be traveling or working over the holidays to, uh, to come and be a part of the Christmas Eve service. We also have a service on Sunday night, December 22nd at 6 p.m., a service on the 23rd at 7 p.m., and then on Christmas Eve, we will have an 11, 1, 3, and 5. If you're joining us online, we will be streaming the entire day on Christmas Eve, so you can join us all throughout the day. Keep it running there at your home so you can enjoy all the music and the message here that day. All of our Christmas services will be identical from the getaway service all the way through Christmas Eve, so any one of those services come out, and like we said earlier, this is a great time to invite. We'll have some invite cards ready for you next week to really do some great evangelism here as we prepare for Christmas Eve. All right, now let's go to the Lord in prayer as we prepare to receive His tithes and our offerings. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for all of Your good gifts. You provide for us in so many ways. Now, Lord, take these, Your tithes and our offerings, as we return a portion of them back to You to do great things with. Lord, we are faithful in this, and we know that you will be faithful in return. And we ask all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ushers, please serve God's people as we continue to worship together this morning. Let's stand and sing this last song together. There is healing in the power of the Lord most high. There is courage in the shadow of peace unending over all my life. There is freedom that washes over me. I find all I need here in your presence, Lord.
pleasure in the kindness of my King. There is comfort in knowing your unfailing love, my provider, you said. Thank you that we can have hope beyond whatever we're in today, Lord. Thank you, God, that in you there's always abundantly more, abundantly more hope, more love, more joy. And so, God, as we leave, be with us. Help us to choose us, choose you over us, God. We thank you for your presence here, and we give you praise and glory in your name. Amen. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. It was great to see you. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Go in peace.